Okay, so welcome back. We're working on chapter four, viewing and navigation. Uh, we have the usual chapter structure, uh, hopefully a book link, a bookmark here, so you can link through it. And in our chapter overview, we're going to learn how to set up viewpoints so that users can quickly go to places in your 3D world that matter the most. And we'll also learn how to navigate, how to move the camera around as an end user, and as an author, how to help them move it around, give different modes depending on what functionality you think they're gonna want. To see how viewpoint and navigation info nodes work, we're gonna look at bindable nodes, the notion of one at a time, uh, you can't have the camera in more than one place at a time. You can't navigate in more than one way at a time. Bindable nodes tell us what is the selection mechanism for those guys. Finally, once we get through that, those key issues, then we'll look at a couple of nodes that take advantage of, of these. Anchor, it's very much like the anchor node in HTML. When you click on some geometry, it links. And we find our links can either be go to another viewpoint in the scene, or link to a completely different scene, perhaps a completely different web page. Okay, the billboard node, we've seen an example before, that takes some geometry, and as I move around the world, as the user moves around the world, the geometry will keep facing them wherever they are. And then finally, the collision node, lets you keep the user from going where you don't want them to. You can make walls and other things collidable to help guide them to where they're supposed to be. Okay, so first the most basic concept. That is, it's, it's helpful to think of your X3D scene as a world that exists. It exists all the time in virtual space where you have it. And the uh, navigation then is where we put our camera, our current view, inside that world to look at different parts of it. Okay, so when you conceptualize that, it can be the camera is where your eyes, where your view is, but then if we go a, a half step beyond that, you can think of it as, that's actually my window, my screen, where that 3D is being read, that, that is the viewpoint, and I'm looking at that because it's our porthole, our view into the world, right on here, and, and while it may be facing in a certain direction, I could be off on the side, that's still gonna draw to where it's pointing at. Okay, so getting those viewpoints in there, making it easy to go to the places that matter, that's our number one tool for navigation, for assisting end users. Okay. There are other ways that users can move around the scene. We've seen a number of them, just going through examples already. Now we're gonna get deliberate about it and check them out. What are the navigation modes? And this is really important that we make it as easy as possible because we're trying to make our 3D useful. If you think about it, your screen on a 3D world is actually a pretty narrow view that you're peering through. It's not like when you're out in the real world and you have 120, 160, if you're spinning around 360 degree field of view, uh, you sort of have a mental picture and you look as often as you want to where you're at. In the, in the 3D cameras and viewpoints we're doing, they're smaller. So we have to be more conscious of, are we looking at the right place rather than looking in the wrong place and having no idea that something else is going on in front of us that's important. So let's take that to the next level. When you author a scene, you know what's in there. You know what you're trying to tell. You know how people might interact with it. So setting up viewpoints can often even take a dramatic arc. It can say, well, here's the first part. Here's the second. Once you've seen that, you're ready for the third. And you can set up these viewpoints often to prompt people to get through the different parts of a scene that you think are important. 
We can further uh, assist that by making some things selectable, clickable, with the mouse or with the enter key or with whatever your pointing device is. And that's the anchor node. If we make the anchor node the parent for something, then any of the geometry under it, when you click and select it, it will jump there. So you go, oh, I could put some billboards this way to the other place. And you click on that sign and it takes you to the other place. You don't have to uh, tediously navigate all the way there, but just teleport, jump, and you're doing the new thing. Okay. Now, there is a gotcha here, and this, this part's a little bit complicated, uh, and that's called bindable nodes. And this is what keeps it so there's only one at a time that's active. Certainly we want to have multiple viewpoints in a scene, but we can't be looking for more than one location at one time because we only have one view screen to look through. So viewpoint selection usually is manual by the user. We will click and select a viewpoint from the list or do page up, page down to go through each of the viewpoints. Okay. But there are other mechanisms, too, where you can force one viewpoint to come to the fore, force it to be the active viewpoint. Similarly, you can force different navigation info nodes to be active. And we, we apply these same techniques to a few other nodes, too. Background, which can draw colors or put images at the horizon. Texture background, which is very similar. Or a fog node, which makes things fade into a single color, a fog color. Okay, so to make sure that this is all consistent, we set up a node type for it. We just define common rules governing it. It's called X3D bindable node. So if you've done any uh, programming or a little bit of computer science before, the similarity here is to uh, the data structure that's called a stack. Okay, and a stack being you have a bunch of stuff, and there's only one on top. You can think of uh, plates in a, in a cafeteria line where they're spring-loaded and they go down. You put more plates on top, it pushes down. You can only reach the plate on the top, and the next one pops up, that kind of thing. So uh, that's how we do it. Uh, very similar structure. OK, so let's drill down then. Uh, we know that the end result is similar. You're only looking through a viewpoint at a time. While at a viewpoint, you might navigate in the local vicinity. OK, so what we did then to illustrate this is create an example that goes through it. And, and that is called binding operations dot uh, x 3 d So when we pull that guy up, we will see that uh, here's the scene, binding operations.x3d, and we have a handful of viewpoints, and we have some geometry. On each one, and then down here we have some more of that animation business that is binding each of the viewpoints in turn. Now these are a bunch of advanced nodes that are part of the animation, which we haven't really studied yet. So we're at another one of those points in the early chapters here where if we want to show you how something works, we have to reach ahead to some of the vocabulary we haven't done. So the take ahead here, the look ahead is we don't have to know all of those things. We have a simple console printed out here that shows you what the proper operation of this guy is. And so uh, we're simply binding different times. We're binding one viewpoint, and it's showing which viewpoint goes active and which viewpoint goes inactive. So it's a simple trace. OK. so. On that example, you definitely want to uh, uh, 
uh, read the book if you want to follow along in detail on this guy. And if I can get us back to the right slide. There we go. Uh, you want to uh, follow through on the book. And the book, the key part in the book is this diagram right here, which looks in hideous detail on every single var possible variation of a binding stack. So you can exercise not only your own comprehension, but also your browser and make sure that it's doing all the right thing. Now, if you're a new user, you probably want to just jump right ahead to uh, the notes and examples. It is quite possible to skip this next section. But for thoroughness, uh, we're going to go through it, and that will be tomorrow. So let's conclude this session by going back to our table of contents, our chapter summary, and where are we? We've talked about the notions of uh, uh, viewpoints and navigation info, how do they work, and next time we will pick up on bindable nodes, and then we will do viewpoint, and in the following lesson, navigation info. All right, see you then.